All right, so now let's talk about the differences between quicksort and bubble sort. Um, you're gonna use in uh, Pascal to do the examples and how we compare quicksort and bubble sort. Both of these are the most widely used, especially by students in the beginning. Uh, they are used because they're easy to implement no matter what uh, programming language you use. And we'll start with quicksort. Quicksort, uh, by definition, uses an element called a pivot, usually in the middle. It can be anywhere, but usually it's in the middle. And it puts the elements on the correct side of the array, depending on if they're bigger or smaller, whether you want them ascending or descending. The pivot can be anywhere, by definition. A pivot is the element on the matrix or the array, which is first selected by an algorithm. And here is the formula on the screen for the quicksort. Yeah, the formula looks a little bit complicated, but when you see the code, you see that it's not that complicated. Okay. So here's the, my code for quicksort in Pascal. I'll start with the comment, a quicksort a sample, and I'm gonna be using 50 random numbers on this first example. The program name is QSort. I use CRT. Well, I use it for clearing the screen mostly, and writing to the screen. I'm gonna define an array type of 50 elements. I do this so it's easier to send it in into the procedures as a parameter. The actual array that I'm gonna be working with is called my array. And I'm using a variable i as an integer. I use that for my loops. So the procedure goes like this. You get an array type and you have an L and H, which is the low and the high number. In my case, those will be one and 50. Uh, inside that I have a procedure sort, which is gonna be recurrent. And uh, left and right is what the L and R stand for, left and right. So I'm gonna have my variables, I'm gonna get my pivot, and then I'm gonna repeat while all the numbers, they go either on the right side or the left side. It's a very, very efficient uh, way of sorting. Um, I continue here until the sort and then I actually do the sort. Again, it was a procedure within a procedure. Uh, basically, in the main program, I'm clearing the screen, um, writing the name of the program. I use the command randomize to create, generate random numbers. First, I do a loop to generate the random numbers, put them into my array, and print them out. Then I sort them, and then I print them again. Very simple very straightforward uh, uh, program. And this is what the screen looks like. And as you can tell, I have my 50 numbers in different order. Then I print them out in the sorted order and it works just fine. When I did this on the screen, it was so fast. 50 numbers is a small array, so no problem there. Now let's do the bubble sort. So what is the bubble sort? It is the most simple way of sorting something. It compares the adjacent elements and swaps them if they are in the wrong order, whether they're ascending or descending. And then it's passed repeatedly until the last number of the sort is listed. Now, here's a graphical view of it. Basically, it's moving the numbers around. Uh, it'll be more understandable when you see the actual code. Uh, and here is the code. Again, I'm using the same program, except I'm changing the quick sort procedure for the bubble sort procedure. The bubble sort procedure is smaller. I start with my variables, uh, i, j, and k. Again, it accepts the array type, my low and my high, which are gonna be one in 50, that doesn't change. The only thing that changes here is I'm doing a loop from the beginning to the end, which is from one to 50, l and h. And then I do the same, uh, a loop again, starting with one all the way to the value of i. And if they're in the wrong order, I swap them. That's all they're doing. Now, this works really good. There's no problem. And again, I'm only doing this for 50 numbers. So you can't tell the difference between the quick sort and the bubble sort when it comes to the screen. Here's the screen, uh, here's the main program, same, that's the one before. Not, the only thing I'm changing is the name of the uh, procedure that sorts it, the numbers. And here's the results. Again, random numbers and then sorted numbers. Works good. 
But what about speed? Well, there we have a problem. You see, it's only 50 numbers, so it's not a big deal. But which one is faster? Well, to do that, I made some modifications to the programs. I put both procedures in the same program, both the uh, quick sort and the bubble sort. And then I implemented a, a small routine to get the time from the system. And instead of printing them because they would not fit on the screen, I'm just gonna do a thousand numbers and I'm gonna sort them out. So the technique here is basically get the time, sort down a thousand numbers and print the time again. So you can see the difference using one of the procedures and then the other one, and then we can compare them. So here it is again, the name of the program. Because I'm using a timestamp, I'm gonna use the time uh, to get the time out of the system. I'm gonna use DOS as well as CRT. The array is also gonna be increased to a thousand instead of 50, because obviously I'm gonna use a thousand numbers. The rest are just variables used uh, by the loops or by the time uh, that procedure that I'm implementing. Here's my quick sort uh, procedure. It is the same procedure that I used on the previous example. I've not changed anything. And then here's my bubble sort. Again, not changed anything from the previous one. Uh, what I did change, however, is I made a procedure to generate the random numbers. Instead of doing it multiple times, I made a procedure that way I can call it in. Because I wanted to use different random numbers for both sorting. Uh, that way it would be more fair. You know, there's no point of having something already sorted, resort it because it will be faster. And that would not be fair. And so here it is. I clear the screen. I write down my title. I first I generate my random numbers. Then I get the time. I print out the time. Then I do my sort and then I get the time and print it again. The, the, the point here is to print the time before and after the sort because I want to know how long it takes uh, the computer to do this using the quick sort. And then I'm going to generate the numbers again, and then do the same thing for bubble sort. So what happens is this. Here are my screen results. And now in the quick sort, I started at 1129.50 and 0.86 hundredths of a second, and it ended up at 0.91 hundredths of a second. That's uh, 0 0.05 hundredths of a second to do the thousand numbers. And the bubble sort, however, it took four seconds and one hundred of a second more. Now, you may be thinking, well, what's the big deal? It's only four seconds. Well, that's because it's only a thousand numbers. If I was doing this for a million numbers, you can see where this is going to take a while. You can actually do the quick sort and a few seconds later get the result. But if you do the bubble sort, I can actually go get a cup of coffee and probably still have to wait more time. So. The more numbers you have, the longer it takes for the bubble sort because it's repeating itself over and over, going over the same numbers until all of them are, are, are sorted. The other thing is I'm only you know, uh, swapping integers, very simple. If these were records, especially a, a more uh, complex structure with maybe you know, a, uh, an array inside the structure and names, strings, numbers, decimals, whatever, all these different uh, uh, variable types, it would take more time. So in conclusion, the quick sort is way, I mean, it's way more faster than the bubble sort, but implementing it is, the bubble sort is a lot easier. For starters, if you're starting to do a sort and you're only doing for 50 numbers on a computer, you're a beginner in training, uh, I would do the bubble sort. But for an application for real life, I definitely would stay away from the bubble sort. And that is what I have concluded using this Pascal example. Until my next video, I hope this helps uh, help you.